how's it going? I'm Ayla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so I think a bit of an odd one this week, uh, sort of an LGBTQ plus topic time again. Um, so I just had, um, because I see, added to a list of um, LGBTQ plus books on a website that celebrates LGBTQ plus works and authors, um, which is great. Um, but it got me kind of thinking, what's the difference between, you know, what I personally would deem an LGBTQ plus book and a book with LGBTQ plus characters? Because more often than not, I fall into the, the second character category where I'm writing books that have LGBTQ plus characters, but they're not necessarily LGBTQ plus books. Um, more so because um the doormaker's sons books fall into that second category as well they have characters but they are not lgbq plus lgbtq plus books <laughs> i'm gonna struggle with that again guys just great um so i would say the very much the defining difference for me is that an lgbtq plus book deals with themes and topics that are specifically related to LGBTQ plus issues, whereas a book with LGBTQ plus characters have characters in it that are obviously LGBTQ plus, and they may even be the main characters, but they're not necessarily, the, the issues that, are, that surround LGBTQ plus community, and I know I'm saying it so much wrong at this point, um, issues that surround the LGBTQ plus community aren't part of the storyline or they're not focused on within the story. It's just these characters happen to be whatever um, and they happen to be in this story, but that's just, you know, they're, they're not defined by those features, not that they are defined by those features if it's an LGBTQ plus topic story. Um, it's more you know, the, the issues around it aren't something that get explored um, or get referenced very much. It's just these characters just happen to be LGBTQ plus and um, LGBTQ plus. <laughs> I, I, I say it so much, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right half the time. Um, but yeah, that, that that's to me, that's the sort of the defining difference, because most of my books contain LGBTQ plus characters, if not all of my books contain them. Um, sometimes if they're part of the series, you might not necessarily find out uh, if the character is LGBTQ plus until later on in the series, but all, all of my books contain at least one character. I mean, I say at least one. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm pretty bad at going back, apparently I'm pretty bad at going back to books I wrote years ago and suddenly seeing LGBTQ plus characters I didn't realise were actually there. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the existence of the colours I see to begin with. And the reasons I would say that the colours I see and no doors allowed, once I release no doors allowed, would definitely be LGBTQ plus books apart uh, instead of books with LGBTQ plus characters, is a lot of the things and a lot of the themes and a lot of the um, storyline focuses on the issues that come with being LGBTQ plus. Um, so yes, they both have fantasy elements, and yes, they're both fantasy stories, and, and um, there, you know, there are other things that do pull the stories through. There's a lot of, you know, stuff with their friends. There's lots of, you know, family drama and stuff like that that goes on. But a lot of like the core issues and a lot of the, you know, the things that sort of underpin the story are LGBTQ plus. Um, so that is how I sort of very much define the difference. Um, I would say that most of my books just have LGBTQ plus characters. And in some ways, I kind of want to say that's also true with the colours I see in No Doors Allowed. But I know because I'm much more focused on the issue, there is much more, um, there are much more themes and things are much more tightly tied 
to you know the the whole LGBTQ plus um, situation that would have been going on much more you know back in the back in the eighties and seventies and, and stuff like that. So I'm very aware of like the cultural history and I've done some research, <laughs> but because you know those things play a much bigger role and they are a thematic drive within the story they are a plot drive within the story um they're not necessarily the complete focus of the story because you know i'm, I'm not one for you know necessarily um thinking in those sorts of terms although if somebody takes that away then that, you know that's perfectly fine as i said before i don't mind people taking things away from my from my books i don't necessarily intend uh, as long as it's sort of like leaves them with a positive feeling afterwards um but yeah, that's that's very much how I would sort of define the difference um, that, you know, those are LGBTQ plus books, because a lot of the issues that they do deal with are LGBTQ plus related. Um, having said that, more often than not, I'm just writing with LGBTQ plus characters. Um, Echo has a couple, one more obviously than the other. Um, in, in, in like in, in with Echo, um, with the LGBTQ plus characters in Echo, and there there is actually technically there's technically there is three. <laughs> I'm being stupid. Te technically there is three. Um, there there kind of has to be three. Um, they're not outright stated. That's what they they are. Um, it's it because there's no need in the story to outright go, yes, these characters are LGBTQ+. It's more kind of uh, contextual, um, rather than it is overtly stated, because that's what works within the narrative, that's what works within the story, and that's what, that, that's what kind of makes sense. Uh, but it, you know, it's just like, these are just an aspect of these characters, um, and, and for, for you know, one of those particular characters, Yes, it is more of an important factor, but at the same time, it's just it's just a detail about this character, um, and you know, it's, it's it's not something that's heavily focused on. Um, in Hyena Boy, obviously they're LGBTQ plus characters because Hyena Boy is set with the same cast of characters as the colours I see, and no doors allowed, so you kind of can't get away from from it. It's the exact same character. Um. And then you, you move on to the, the Dollmaker Sun character, the Dollmaker Sun's characters. Um, there is definitely one, uh, one of the main, one of the main side characters. <laughs> one of the characters that kind of fills the spot of being sort of the main side character rather than necessarily a main character. Um, you know, 100% is definitely LGBTQ+. Um, he appears both in the first book and in the second book. It is, I think, fairly, it's made fairly clear um, in the first book, and it's definitely made clear in the second book. Um, there is no doubt there. Um, first book, you also have a couple of other characters that read between the lines. You know what's definitely going on there. Um, but I've not spelt it out. 100% clearly because that's something that can be explored um, and properly looked into with the the you know the the, the next arc in in uh, the next arc <laughs> in the uh, Shadows Beneath the Light uh, series um, because those characters will be coming back there and that's when their relationship will become a little bit more relevant and uh, will be something that I you know, will explore a little bit more. But, you know, they, they are definitely there. Um, as for, you know, one of the main characters themselves, um, yes, definitely LGBTQ+, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but the way it's been written, it might might be a little be up, bit up for debate. Um, but again, it's one of those things where when I come to writing the next two, well, I, I, yeah, that, that's the other thing. I've um, also decided I'm going to be rewriting <laughs> the third and the fourth book. Um, I'm basically going to take the plot as I remember it from book three and write it, you know, just rewrite it with a lot of the new ideas that I've had um, and stuff like that. Um, book four is going to be completely overhauled. 
Book four does not work at all from what I can remember. I can remember thinking how ridiculous it was when I was writing it, you know, the, that it needs to be completely overhauled. Uh, probably means those books will get renamed. Um, I will keep like the original versions as, as their own sort of separate thing, as like an alternative version of these, and then just write, you know, new names, new, new everything else uh, when I sort of come to do it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's one of the things I'm planning to do when I'm rewriting um, books three and four, um, uh, or the, their own arc. Because they're, they're not technically books three and four, they're going to be books one and two of their own arc, but they're going to be part of the, the Shadows Beneath the Light series. Um, so, yeah, that's how I've got to kind of, got to kind of think of it. Um, but yeah, when I'm coming to do that, I'm definitely going to make, you know, the, those the, the characters that I know are LGBTQ+, plus, um, that aren't necessarily made clear as that's what they are in um, the Dominic Sons book. I'm going to clarify in um, in the next two in, in the, the next arc, <laughs> um, as it were, um, because I think you know it, it, it's one of those things where it's like it's not necessarily 100 percent a you know 100 percent necessary needed detail, but I like my relationships between my characters. Um, Certainly, you know, when I go back and I, I reread things, I'm like, ooh, I, I want to, ah, that's, that's, that's the other thing, that's the other thing is like the Goldmaker's Sun book is, there are actually more characters, the more I think about it, there are more characters that I can clarify what's going on with them. <laughs> so many more characters, so, so much of a spectrum. But again, it, it's one of those things where when I'm coming to write uh, books three and four, when I'm, I'm getting to explore the next stage of the relationships um, between the characters that you meet in, in book one, um, who are not present in, in book two, that, that's the whole point of, of doing, the, doing the second arc. Um, I'm going to sort of very much clarify what's going on with certain characters, um, and exploring those relationships and how those relationships have developed since. And I'm getting very, very, very off track. Very, very off track. <laughs> what was the topic again? Oh yeah, all right, okay. So yeah, that's, um, I mean, I would definitely consider myself an LGBTQ plus writer um, because I am LGBTQ+. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a demise demisexual panromantic, uh, so basically that means I'm not attracted to anybody unless I feel emotionally close to them, and who I'm attracted to doesn't, their gender doesn't matter at all. Um, I'm not attracted to them because of any gender-related things, it is purely based on their personality, and as I said, how close I feel to them. Um, it's really 90% of the time, 99% of the time, <laughs> especially at the moment, um, I feel more asexual than I than I do anything else, um, which is one of the reasons why I, I do appreciate tackling LGBTQ plus themes um, in the Never Eating series, because a few of the characters in that um, uh, have experiences which are similar to the experiences that I've had. Um, I very definitely made one particular character exactly like me um, in order to sort of voice some of the things that, you know, I felt growing up um, and, and a lot of the confusion I had growing up. And it was nice to give this particular character uh, a situation in which they were made to sort of feel OK with that and sort of come to terms with, with certain things at a much younger age than I had been able to. Um, but yeah, I, I, as I was saying, I consider myself an LGBTQ plus writer, uh, 100%, and I definitely consider myself a writer that writes LGBTQ plus characters, but I don't necessarily always write LGBTQ plus books because I consider those to be more dealing with themes and issues related to being LGBTQ plus, um, and not just books with LGBTQ plus characters even if the characters are the sort of main characters. Um, that's sort of very much where I kind of fall in my way of thinking about that. I apologise, I went on a completely random tangent where I'm not even sure what my own thoughts were. <laughs> and I kept remembering random things and they were going la 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 la. Um, 
I don't make some books that's still like way on my mind right now and like all the plans I've got for, for that and, and everything else is sort of like all just very much here um especially because I'm coming in coming towards the end of the editing process with those and hopefully things crosses really soon so you guys will be able to read them be able to speculate uh, what's going on with those characters and what might be coming in the following arc which is probably going to be slightly further away than I initially planned, but hey ho, there we go. <laughs> um, all right, okay, so I'm going to stop my insane babbling at this point. Um, I know I've been a little bit all over the place, I know I've been like excitedly going like back and forth between various things that I'm talking about and not necessarily being as clear with the topic as I should be. Um, I hope you guys though have found this one sort of interesting despite my crazy all over the placeness. Um hope you look forward. I'm hoping you're looking forward to whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!